Welcome to the First 40. This is the Goon Squad Sports Radio Show. We are flying with one member out. Black Thor is going to be out. So me and Ice Warrior is going to hold this down for the next 40 minutes and our overtime show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel here on the First 40, the Goon Squad Sports Radio Podcast. How you doing, Ice Water? I'm good, brother. You, look, you putting pressure on me now with, without Black Thor because you, you know he's everything to us, so we miss him. <laughs> he's holding it down, man, doing the J-O-B, man, so hopefully he gets home safe. He's taking care of business. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. But we're going to start this off with the Kaepernick situation, bro. And you know how I feel about Kaepernick. I boycotted for a whole year with the NFL picks, did not watch the NFL for a whole year, and then came back last year to watch the uh, NFL. And now the NFL decides that they want to work him out on Saturday in Atlanta. And um, my first question is, is is it legit or is it staged by the NFL? And I would like to answer first before you get in there, because I know you've been talking about this for a while and you've been trying to get on the players in the NFL. But uh, I call bullshit on the NFL for this. And because when you're working out a player, you work them out on a Tuesday. And I think the NFL is trying to save face, saying that people are saying that they're, he's being blackballed. So they're going to kind of put this show on. And if no, there are no takers, then they're going to say, you know what? We did our part. We put it out there. We made our best effort. But if there are takers, here's the thing that I am very concerned about, Black, is that he compromises what he was standing on in the first place, um, not kneeling, not talking, uh, all the stuff that he's been doing outside of football. It kind of reminds me, you can't tell me this brother is not the Muhammad Ali of this generation. Three years later, just like Ali, taking your prime, three years of your prime, and then trying to bring you back in, into football right now. But really, I kind of call bullshit on the NFL, trying to save face, trying to say, hey, we're, we're hearing these rumblings about us blackballing him and these teams blackballing him. Let's put this show on. And if there are no takers, then, hey, we wipe our hands up. Your thoughts, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, my sentiments are very similar to yours. Uh, I told you a long time ago. I mean, I, I mentioned the players, but I also mentioned uh, before that I think people need to see the NFL for what it is. And I told you before, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a good old boy network. And not, when I say good old boy, I'm not old. I'm not talking about good old boy like we're talking about down south uh, as far as uh, uh, that type of situation, right, Confederate flag type thing. Right. What I mean, good old boy network is the fact that you have rich individuals, rich men, mostly white, that are deciding how they play their play the game and what the rules are. That's what it comes down to. But really, I mean, I agree with you 100%. But here's the thing, okay? I've always said that they always protect the shield, okay? Yeah. Always. They protect the shield. So when you look at it, like I said, it comes down to this, for me anyway. Um, Kaepernick, again, I, I really don't know. I know he must, we really must, must want to play. We've said all along, I contend, why would you even want to play now? But that's what he wants to do. He has the right. Here's what the NFL is going to do, what they're doing. We are not going to stand in your way. Not only are we not going to stand in your way, we're going to help you. Mm-hmm. So what we're going to do, as you said before, we created this opportunity for you. Granted, it's not on a Tuesday, but it's more than they're going to say. It's more than we've done in the past because everybody knows that Tuesday is the off day in the NFL. Right. So right. a lot of people, particularly with, uh, uh, with the, the franchises. So they'll have some representation there. It just won't be perhaps the primary people that need to see it. Again, the NFL is pulling out all the stops because they want to cover themselves. And they want to cover the shield. So what you do is you provide this opportunity for him. If he wants to play, he's going to show up. He's going to come out there. Some people will show up. I think some teams will show up. Also, too, the shield is like this. You say you want to play. You made allegations against us. And how many times, I've said this 100 times, do you know that you can, you can actually sue the people that you work for and get your job back? Mm-hmm. It just doesn't happen. But this is different. This is the NFL. It's not like any other regular business. Like we're trying to make it. The only point, very quickly, is this: um, take your time. So they are doing this. They're setting it up. Everything's coming the way that they want it to. Uh, he has a time, date, place, things of that nature. And now, with all that being said, they said the allegations you made against us, 
Okay, we settled that. We paid you. We paid you, right? Now you want to play. Okay, you want to play? We're going to work this out and set up an opportunity for you again. So they're doing that. And as you mentioned earlier, they're going to say, what else do you want us to do? Mm -hmm. Now it is on the owners and the front offices of those teams that come out to decide whether or not they want him. The NFL is like, I don't know what else we can do. If you're good enough, then maybe somebody will recognize it. They are literally, I told you from the beginning, divide and conquer. I always said that from day one. You remember that? Day yeah. one, when they split it, they know it's, it's, this is calculated. They know exactly what they're doing. So if he doesn't make it or nobody signs him, the shield is like, what you want us to do? What else can we do? You want us to put, put you on the team? That's not how the NFL, that's not how pro football goes. So they literally are going through all the, uh, they, they will, they are going to do everything. They're doing everything they can to put themselves in a position where it's like, there's nothing else we can do for you. We paid you. We took your allegations. We're creating this opportunity. Now it is not up to us. It is up to the owners and the front offices. And, and as a, the commissioner will come out and probably say, or whoever's saying, we, we don't, we have no, no, uh, no remorse. We don't hate him. We don't, it's not like that. And he's welcome to play, but you can't put him on the team. He's going to have to earn that. And, and when you look at it, even though it's not fair, that's a hell of a, hell of a philosophy and, 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 a, and, a, and a farce that they put down that they put down and now it's like what else can you say about and and the other thing too real quick is for those that cannot attend the meeting they're taping it yeah along with his workout along with the interview that he's doing with the team the interview that he's providing for the team so they're pulling out all costs bro if you you can't make it oh no problem we, we got you set up we we got the we have the tape videotape set up for you and you can review it at your leisure. Yeah. Can I just say one more thing? Go ahead, man. Pimping, baby. I don't know where it depends on where you're from, but where we, where I'm from, that's pimping. That's calculated pimping. We yep. set you up, and now it's on you. What you want me to do? I did everything I could for you. Is it still my fault? You didn't make it. Yeah. The, th the reason why I call bullshit on this because NFL teams had ample enough time to grab Kaepernick, bring him into their camp to test whether or not he was ready or not to come and play. And we have seen all these second-rate quarterbacks that don't hold a candle to cap get chances to play in the N NFL. I mean, you can name the team, the backup. Cap could have came, came in here and got the job. And I think we used to mention that on the show every now and then, Miami, uh, Indianapolis. The Bears. I mean, you can you can just name teams that lost their starting quarterback who cap could have came in. And the thing that that really bugs me is that you know everybody's up on and I and I congratulate Lamar Jackson and and Watson, all those guys in Mahomes who are running that read option. Cap was the one that, who put that in in the play in the NFL, man. So all these teams who wanted to run the run option and all these teams are attempting to run the run option and don't have quarterbacks to run it. Here you had a guy sitting down for three years who could have ran that and they were saying, oh, he needs to be a pocket quarterback. He needs to be this. Now you see teams like Baltimore changing their offense to fit the quarterback. And now that, that bugs me. And that's why I say I call bullshit on the NFL and all these teams. You didn't really want this guy. You still don't want this guy. And I'm like Eric Reed. I believe it when I see it, Ice. I agree with you 100%. But like we know, particularly in this type of situation, we can say he, we believe he got black ball. I said that a long time ago. You did with number. We said that often. But the, the problem is you have to prove it. You have to prove it. And they didn't even allow it to go to the court system. See, that, that's how you work game. Most people say when you – provide and you make a payment at any time, it means that you're somewhat guilty or you are guilty from that standpoint. But they didn't even allow it to get to that point. They said, why don't you come in? Let's talk and let's give you a little money. Was like, what, 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 this, will this work for you? Along with the opportunity to possibly play? See, dude, that's, 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 you can call it, I guess you can call it strategy. You can call it, uh, 
uh, pimping, you can call it. James <laughs> you, you just call, huh? <laughs> I call but it gamesmanship. Yeah, yeah, you can just call exactly. This is like playing chess. They're like, wow, well, you want to play again? Okay, well, well, there's no need to continue on with this. Why you want to go through the courts and all this and that? I'll tell you what, we're gonna, we're, this is our offer. This is our offer, no strings attached. If you still want to play, you're allowed to play. And we're gonna even set you up with an with with a time and an appointment. Also, too, let's point this out that uh my understanding is that Cabernet and his folks uh were notified less than a week yes. before this is taking place. Yes. So it, it's hard to do almost anything. But then again, hey, this is the first opportunity that we're all in on. But it, it is strategically planned, I believe. And this is what you're doing. And at the when they when they finish it on Saturday, allow, along with providing the videotape, also the uh, videotape of the interview and also the videotape of the workout, we're putting all our resources behind this. Mm. Now, now, Mr. Cabernet, along with that check that we cut you, along with your buddy Eric Reed, who we cut a check. It is now up to you, sir. What say you, as you like to say, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Boom? <laughs> as my favorite rap group of all time, Public Enemy says, can't trust it. So I'm not <laughs> trusting it until I see this and uh, they give him a, 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 a credible and good deal. And so uh, Saturday, they have it on Saturday. So they'll be talking about it on Sunday. And they're kind of con they got everybody talking about the NFL. NFL is very good at marketing stuff like this. They have you talking about them all week, and they're using Kaepernick this week uh, to to stay on the front pages. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is NCAA basketball and the eye test. Man, uh, my my Memphis Tigers uh, laid down last night. They got beat last night. They showed their youth last night. But uh, I want to talk about. Uh, James uh, Wiseman a little bit later, but I want to really get your eye test on college basketball because it seems like nobody wants to be number one. Evanston beat Kentucky last night, the number one team in the country. And um, I'm, I think we talked about this last week, man. There's so much parody in college basketball. I have no clue who's going to win the national championship or who's favorite or who's the dominant team in the country. Yeah, but, but as we talked about as well, you can't make any assumptions after two games, two, three games. You just can't. I mean, seriously, it, it's almost it, – there's so many games to be played in college basketball, unlike college football. If an upset happens, you're like, oh, wow, how are they going to recover? I heard somebody today talking about um, the fact that uh, Kentucky – we're going to remember this lost – uh, Kentucky had to Evansville simply because of the fact that this is going to have, to have a, a, a repercussions down the line. No, no, it's not. <laughs> you no, know it's not. I mean, I'm sorry, it might, but I, I don't see uh, Coach Calipari letting that happen. Last year, Kentucky struggled early out the gate. Everybody's talking about they're too young. They can't make one. They end up, what, did they make Sweet 16? So come on. Don't, don't, do, don't do me on that. Let's just say it's the first couple games. They're still feeling themselves out. The media does a hell of a job of hyping all these teams up, and nobody knows what's going to happen until they hit the floor. And when you look at the way that Evansville beat them, now we find out that uh, the coach was Walter McCarty, the yeah. former Wild Kentucky Wildcat that knows how things are ran down in Kentucky. Who better than a former alumnus to know how the game is run, even if he didn't play for Calipari? He knows how it's done. He's still connected with the program or has been, so he knows the game. So why why does it surprise you that does happen? Uh, looking at other things as far as the eye test, uh, the standpoint of teams that are playing well, I had to throw this out, out at you. I told you this before, that uh, the yeah, upset. Louisville again. No, I'm not. That's my third point. <laughs> my second point is Florida State upset highly ranked Florida yeah, early yeah. on. Yeah. And nobody's expecting Florida State. I mentioned to you before, they always have athletes. He has three new seven-footers, Leonard Hamilton down there, and they come with it. So if your game, you're not ready for the night, guess what? You might have a problem. And Florida was ranked fourth, I think, or fourth or sixth, something to that effect. And they got bulldozed. I think they shot like 29% from the field wow. that night. Florida State, I told you, I don't know if they ever win a national championship, but that gentleman can recruit. 
and they play hard and they play de strong defense. Also, too, I got to throw it since you mentioned it. I got to throw Louisville out there. I told you they are look, <laughs> they're talented. And Chris Mack can coach. I told you, if you can win that Xavier the way he was winning, and no disrespect to Xavier, but you send him to Louisville with a base, a recruiting base of people that really want to be there, which means you can get top five uh, talent, then you're saying something. You're really saying something. And it goes from that standpoint, too. And uh, I had an opportunity to watch Virginia. Man. Yeah. I tell you what, let me get off it with this. Virginia is very talented. They may not be as talented as they were last year, but the system's still working. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, the system's working. They have the type of players that know how to fill in the system. It's kind of like when you watch uh, uh, back in the day with, uh, when Connecticut had that nice little run or some of those teams, you just kind of plug move. and play. Yeah. And they play defense, they play hard, and, and they play smart. And that will take you a long way. So – they look real good. There are a number of other teams out there, but right now that's what I kind of see uh, along with uh, we have a big game tonight too. Having that chance to check the score lately uh, between Ohio State and uh, uh, Villanova. Yeah, uh, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm paying close attention to that now. Uh, Vill uh, Ohio State's up by 20 on Villanova right now, 42-22 in the second half with 18 Ooh. minutes, 28 seconds left. So Ohio State – uh, they're, they're serious. Let's go down to top 10. Kentucky's number one. They won't be number one after this week, followed by Duke, Michigan State. Louisville, number four. Kansas is number five. <laughs> North Carolina jumps from number nine to number six, mm -hmm. followed by Maryland. You're one of your favorite teams. You always pay attention to this team. Gonzaga is number eight. <laughs> Virginia is number nine. And Villanova. Uh, if they don't do well in this game, they will get knocked out of the top 10 and uh, look for Ohio State to maybe jump into their 16 right now, they'll, they'll probably jump into the uh, top 10 if they can uh, beat uh, Villanova. Villanova has that system too, but uh, they got about 18 minutes left. Let's see if they can come back from that 20-point uh, lead. Um, you got uh, Wisconsin playing. Uh, you also have uh, a few other teams that are playing. I was just watching LSU and VCU. Uh, they were playing, and uh, they just took the score off. So I don't know who won that game, but it was pretty tight at the uh, the closing of that game. But I'm really a um, a Cole Anthony uh, fan. Got to watch North Carolina. You know how I feel about North Carolina. Cole Anthony is the truth. Um, James Wiseman uh, from um, Memphis. I saw him play last night. Uh, they called two quick fouls on him. I think just to, I think the NCAA had. Um, if they, if with, with the refs and say, just call two fouls on, put him on the bench. If we can't keep him off the court, let's foul him and uh, have him call fouls. So he was on the bench. He couldn't get in the rhythm. But I think he had, uh, what, about 14 points, 12 rebounds that game anyway, coming off the bench. And um, the situation with him, man, I think it's asinine that what the NCAA is doing with uh, Wiseman and uh, the coach there. Uh, what's your, your take on the uh, Wiseman situation in uh, NCAA basketball with Memphis. He is deemed ineligible. They got to stay in court to say, hey, we're going to play him. Um, do you think it's the right decision to play him, or should they just sit him out until this is all cleared up? Uh, I think I would probably sit him out. The only reason why I say that is if uh, they have any chances of moving down the line and they don't want to forfeit any games, if it doesn't turn in their, in their favor, then – the NCAA could possibly come out, I think, and, and probably take forfeit those ones. They find out that he was ineligible, be based on what they're, the, the evidence they're trying to gather. But, uh, I mean, the whole thing about you know, Penny Hardaway at the time, uh, helping out with the move and the boosters, things like that, that, uh, you know, they, they're trying to consider him a booster back in the day. Right. And, uh, and it was kind of to help with the move. Uh, I just think it's really a sad situation because now um, – they need to clean that up. The NCAA needs to clean that up. And now we have this type of situation. Somebody mentioned about Derrick Rose. They thought this was very similar. This article, very similar to the Derrick Rose situation in Memphis. Mm -hmm. So with Penny Hardaway is going to be a target simply because of the fact that he's been able to land all these kids early on. Right. And, and it's just an opportunity for them to come back after him. Um, yeah, I probably would sit him down just for a moment, just kind of see what was going on. Again, I told you it's the running joke. And I mentioned to you before, I'm not trying to be funny, but uh, all they had to do was, uh, I told my brother this, and I know this is underhanded, but I'm just saying, 
and Penny Hardaway really wanted to be nasty about it and he knew he needed to move, he could just made a donation to to the church, the Baptist, the Baptist church, <laughs> and then had them provide to the uh, provide the, the moving uh, uh, funds for the move. Uh, and no one would have said anything differently. Nobody would have questioned it when they said anything. They just said, well, the church has uh, accumulated some funds for him to move forward and continue his education. And you know how it is, and not to try to stereotype things, but it is what it is. At certain uh, African-American Baptist churches, they somebody would dare you to come after uh, that, that church, a church trying to help a young man down the line. How do you think, uh, allegedly, how do you think Cal Newton uh, stopped this situation? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when, when it came through the church and his dad. Anyway, so that's that, that 10 percent and to the church and uh make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody would have said anything. It was like, so is the NCAA gonna question the church? I don't think so. Penny just need to work on anyway. I'm not gonna sound like Chris Carter. My bad. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> you know what, man? I, I think that it's good that Memphis is fighting this because the NCAA pulls stuff like this all the time. And I, I think it's good that they fight this because it's, it's obvious that they're picking on Penny Hardaway because he was able to come out of nowhere and grab some of the best recruits out the country. And you know some of those schools like uh, Duke and Coach Krzyzewski is dry snitching on, you know, on Memphis because he couldn't get the, the top recruits. And Kentucky, that's not too far away from Memphis, he couldn't get the top recruits. And now you got a new player in town and they, they see that this is a threat. So I'm glad that Memphis, maybe they'll lose, maybe they'll lose out. This guy's going to be a number one pick regardless, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that Memphis is stepping up and saying, you know what, we're not going to take this sitting down. You're not going to ruin our season. We may have a good season. We'll make a good run. We're letting them play until we, we know otherwise. So I, I kind of, um, I'm kind of glad that they're out there and they're, they're, they're putting up their dukes and say, hey, you know what, you want to fight us on this? We'll, we'll fight on this. But he wasn't even the coach at that particular time. He was an AAU coach. I've, I've heard of AAU coaches doing certain things to help different players out in situations like that. So he, he was just doing what he knew, you know, what to do or how to do it. And so the NCAA is, wants to kind of be the holier and thou kind of uh, association. And now they want to step in. And to me, they're trying to put the face that they're cleaning up a lot of stuff because of all these FBI <laughs> investigations, uh, I, don't, I don't think that is, is working. And with the impending uh, policy changes with these players making money, I think they're, they're just trying to swing for the fences and grab and, and cause as much ruckus as possible. Another story you put out uh, dealing with the NCAA and AAU uh, on um, the Reality of Sports page and the Goon Squad Sports Radio Facebook page is LeBron James versus the AAU coaches saying, Coaches don't give a damn about these players, man. And he's saying that some of these players are coming in already banged up from AAU, going into colleges, going into to the pros, and that these coaches are really kind of running these guys ragged. What's your thoughts on his uh, views about AAU coaches, man? I'm a little, I'm, a, I'm about to get in trouble, so I'm a, let me apologize. Somebody's probably going to see this and go, <laughs> really? Really? Anyway, but it is what it is. But um, I think he's right on point. I don't think all AAU coaches are bad. I don't. I don't think they're all trying to use these players. But I think some are getting caught up in uh, trying to be successful so they can, uh, as they say, they can grab the, grab the bag. And what I mean by grab the bag, it is, can be very lucrative for AAU coaches uh, connected with certain uh, uh, athletic retailers. Yes. Yeah, it can be very lucrative. And in regards to the equipment sponsorships and other things that are going on can be very lucrative. So I think LeBron's on point. Actually, I'm surprised that he said that because mm. we know that he, in the past, he's had his own tournaments and the best of the best have come to his tournaments. So for him to say that, it says a lot because you think he's the guy that's right in the midst of it, but he doesn't have anything that he needs to gain, and particularly when he has two sons that are playing right now. Yeah, that's what I want to mention. Yeah. I don't think he would have been saying anything unless his two sons weren't playing AAU ball. So yeah. I think he's kind of opposed to how they're being used mm -hmm. as opposed to looking at the overall kind of programs. And so, I, you know, what do you think about that? Because I think if he didn't have a personal stake with his two sons, you wouldn't hear LeBron talk about this. And that's my point. Because in the past, when, when he had his tournaments up in the Akron, or he had, he had all of these tournaments and 
people, teams were coming from all over the country to play in, in the, the King James tournament, whatever it was. And the fact that he has now tells you a lot about what's going on in the AU. And I just remember, I think I told you before that I had a chance uh, uh, to talk to Greg Oden, uh, the big fella, uh, yeah. played for Ohio State and was uh, an outstanding high school ball player. And uh, I asked him because I was so curious. I asked him about uh, playing all the time and whatnot. And of course, the kind of guy that he is, I said, do you think you were overused and played too much? He was like, nah, I, you know, stuff happens. And bless his heart. That's just who he is. Mm -hmm. But he told me that I guess he had a couple of growth spurts, like around seventh grade or whatever, where he went up, shot up like maybe five, six inches. And he grew up so at one point where his body was just growing so fast. I don't know if he tried to change up or tried to play ball still, but he was at some point he had to have a hip surgery. Wow. Because of the growth. Right. And if your body's changing like that and you're still out there trying to play every week, you need your body needs time to adjust and get used to your new your new uh your new build, along with the fact that you had to get used to it. But if they keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and we know Greg Oden came to Ohio State with a banged up wrist. I think his he wrist was broken. Yeah. Yeah. And no disrespect, uh, his coach was Mike Conley Sr., Mike Conley's dad, right. who's a hell of an athlete, uh, a, a renowned, uh, decorated athlete. But then again, it's that game over and over. And when you're number one, I, uh, I think it was uh, Spice Indy was what it was called. Because you had uh, Mike Conley, uh, Mike Conley, you, you had Greg Oden, Daquan Cook from Dayton, Ohio. Right. David Lighty, formerly of, of the Ohio State University, and a few other guys. So they were loaded. Yeah. So every time that they played, it was a show. Yeah. Because they yeah, had to Florida that year for the national championship. Right. And when you read the, the article, one of the things they point out, too, what LeBron mentioned was the fact that uh, you can have three games with them before, uh, with, before noon. Like you might have a, a one game, another game, and then the championship games at one or noon. So you play your team, your uh, young man has played three games within a couple hours. Hmm. And and we know that the competition is is intense, it's the it's it's hot, everybody's watching, and people were excited about watching, and we know how that officiating can go. So it's intense. Not only is it intense physically, it's also intense mentally. Right. So it's a lot going on, man. And for him to say that surprised me. But then again, you got to wonder whether or not, as you said, if he didn't have a stake in it with his two sons, whether or not he would be uh, speaking out as much. But regardless of the fact, to me, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad he is speaking up because otherwise this probably never would have been uh, mentioned uh, at all by anybody else. Yeah, but this has been years and years that, that the AAU has been going strong. And now all of a sudden LeBron says something. Uh, ugh, that I don't know how, how that's going to affect it uh, in a positive or negative way. I, I don't know. I'm going to um, try to get two things done here. I want you to talk about the reality of sports. But before that, uh, baseball season just ended. But <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this weeks ago about this nice feeling. And now the Astros are, are caught up. And um, you wonder why some teams are really kind of, it almost seems like, and I remember my dad, we would be on the phone, he's like, it almost seems like the Houston Astros know what the other team's about to do. And boom, here it is. Um, did they cross a line with doing, um, uh, intercepting the signs electronically? And then what should be the punishment for this? Because I have my own uh, idea of what should be the punishment for this, but I want to get your idea first. Uh, real quick, I'm not sure what the punishment should be. I mean, you could say, uh, we're going to take this away from them, whatever. I don't know what you can really do. Maybe there's something you can take from them during the season that does not allow them to maybe have the advantage that other teams do, do at that certain point. But uh, did that cross the line? Yeah, I think they did. But we said the same thing about the Patriots in the NFL. Not yeah. much was done there. Yeah. But the one thing I will say about this, I'm not sure about the electronic thing, but I do remember when they played the Tampa Bay uh, Rays yeah. in that series. The one thing I realized, and I don't know if they were using that then now, but I do realize that in game two uh, of the, uh, the uh, championship series and in game seven, there's a gentleman by the name, pitcher by the name of Troy Glasnow. And he's one of the top pitchers for Tampa. 
and they were rocking him. He started off well early in game two, and he lost game seven. And literally, you can see the batters coming up to one another, like talking in the dugout, talking amongst themselves, telling, basically saying, they mentioned this, that he was tipping his pitches. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they were still banging on the trash can saying he's going to change up. I don't think they had to. But literally, one guy would say, hey, man, and they would point and talk about it and whatnot, and he was tipping his pitches. And they destroyed him because of that, literally. So, I mean, I, that – I think they're not alone, though. I think a lot of teams are doing it. They just got caught. Doing yeah, they got caught. <laughs> uh, I think if they're, they're not serious about really vacating championships or vacating things of that sort, it's going to keep going on. If they're not really serious about this, if they give them a $2 million fine, that's like – New England Patriots kind of punishment. Okay, we'll give you the two million. We still have the championship. We probably made more than that by advertising all the stuff, new ticket prices. But it got to be more than financial. It's got to be like, you know what? You really cheated. You're really cheating the game. We're going to take this from you. And the team that you played gets the championship. Woo. Even the Yankees were saying this. The Open A's were saying that they were hearing things in their dugout, things of that sort. So I think when you're going above and beyond to try to cheat the game, I think the game should be taken from you. And so wow. that, that, I think it should be that severe if you're cheating that much. Now, stealing signs, and we, you know, you're out in the field and you kind of, you know, know certain tendencies of a, a different player, that's all well and good. That's part of the game. But when you're going out your way using Apple watches and, and all <laughs> electronics, and behind the camera and all that other stuff, trying to pick that up. That's not part of the game. That's, that's actually cheating. And I always uh, got on the NFL for not punishing the New England Patriots enough for doing what they're doing. But if baseball wants to remain relevant and wants mm -hmm. to remain pure, then you got to do, you know, just like they, they'll do it in the Little Leagues when they took that the championship away from mm -hmm. those young men. Let's mm -hmm. take them away from the big boys and let's see how they react to it. Wow. You know what? I'm going to say this. I agree. I can see that. I, I'm not sure if they would go that far because there's a lot of money involved, a lot of things going on. And and, and I agree with you, but I don't think they, they had a, the huspa to do it. I really don't. I think I don't think they would do that. The other thing, too, is a, I know a former uh, a Houston natural pitcher is one of the guys who came out and said, yeah, they used to do it all the time. But what I found ironic was is that Carlos Beltran, who was on the team when they won that championship, <laughs> And that's now the, the manager of the New York Mets came yeah. out and said, yeah, they used to do some things like that. And he said, well, it's kind of messed up. I don't agree. I don't think they should have done it. But at the same time, he said, they were saying that's his only championship. So he's like, nah, they should take the championship. Because they don't want to get back this <laughs> Hey, they do, do it in Little Leagues. And the reason why they do it in Little oh, Leagues man. is to protect the integrity of the game. True, but 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 to hear Beltran say, "Yeah, it wasn't right," but I'm not getting my ring back. That's the only ring I have. <laughs> oh man! You can keep the ring, you can keep the trophy, but you won't be recognized as. I mean, there'll be an asterisk next to that 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 his that part of history that you did something to uh, really tarnish the integrity of the game. And so I tell you what, though, if they do that, though. I would say you do an asterisk. It's the same way I say this, too, very quickly. We talk about baseball, about the Hall of Fame. The yeah. whole situation with the with the, the steroids and whatnot, with these players they want to let in, a lot Barry Bonds, McGuire, whatever, I think there should be an asterisk. So people will know, but they still should get in. Same way with Pete Rose. Pete Rose is, can't get out of his own damn way. He should get in, but it should be an asterisk. That's just me. Let right. everybody know. So you can get mad if it's an asterisk, but if you want to get in, I know there's other people too that deserve asterisks, Ty Cop. Anyway, but uh, <laughs> I'm just saying that I think that they should get in, but I think it should be an asterisk. And there's no difference between uh, Barry Bonds and Mark McGuire just because you like him more than, than, than the other guy, Sammy Sosa. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got about five minutes left. And I know you do a sports page called The Reality of Sports. And I wanted you to talk to the people a little bit about Reality of Sports and then some of the, the stories that you feature on Reality of Sports. Yeah, uh, we try to really pump up the Reality of Sports because of in connection with the Goon Squad. Because I think we have a couple different audiences and some people may not get over to uh, Reality of Sports. And I know we have a, a big following coming up on uh, Goon Squad. So I think it works best that way. So the Reality of Sports really comes down to me, uh, myself, and a few friends just talking about 
what we like about sports and what we don't. And one of the things is we want to give it to you real and raw and straight up so you can start thinking on your own. And that's what it really came down to, why well, it's called the reality of sports. I want you to think about that on your own. So with that being said, uh, one of the things I think about, and you mentioned before, was uh, they had uh, we had a story about uh, the, the black quarterback and how they're making a difference and how they are uh, making a difference in regards to Lamar Jackson. You saw Patrick Mahomes and from the standpoint of how they're making it seem different in the way that we see leadership in the game. Because I'm going to tell you straight out, I didn't have a chance to say this, but I'm going to say it now. I thought Lamar Jackson was good enough to play. Yeah. And now other people are trying to recognize him too. But after watching that Bengals game, I didn't know Barry Sanders played quarterback. <laughs> that spin move. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo, buddy. That was, that was, oh, my God. That That is – that is hey, that's right that's, that, that's game changing. <laughs> that's something that's gonna be like we saw Barry Sanders for those that remember Barry Sanders. Yeah, that is gonna be something that you're gonna see on millions of years for years and years to come because it was an amazing feat, and we haven't seen anything like that since Walter Payton or Barry Sanders. So it's just things like that too. Of uh, also too throw this out real quick because I know we're running out of time, but we can talk about this later. But the fact that Kansas the basketball has some issues, too, uh, with uh, allegations against them. But they still were able to sign a top five recruit. Right. Five recruit. And Bryce Thompson, despite the allegations. Right. I'm just hey. Just, what do they know that we don't know? Well, hey, evidently something. Because why would a kid sign there when you know he can go somewhere else and play? Right. Mm. Wow. Wow. I, uh, Coach Harbaugh has to be, uh, you know, just having sweet dreams now because you remember before Lamar Jackson started to make it big, he was on his way out as a coach. Mm -hmm. And he made a decision, I'm going to let this guy play and I'm going to play the way, I'm going to coach the way he likes to play. And Lamar Jackson saved Coach Harbaugh's job. <laughs> the way he's playing, he's playing like he played in Louisville, man. I can't believe this soon. You know, because everybody, uh, I think Poland, uh, uh, I forget the guy's name. I think his name is Poland. Bill, Bill Poland, yeah. Poland he said that this guy can't play in the NFL. He's not a quarterback. And they was talking about putting him at wide receiver. And how many people other than him have said that about black quarterback? And the black quarterback took the bait and went and played another position and, ne and never really panned out in the NFL. And so Lamar Jackson stuck to his guns. I'm playing quarterback. Uh, Kyler Murray, all these guys are coming out now saying, you're not switching me to running back. You're not switching me to, to receiver. I'm a quarterback. And that's the position I'm going to play. And I'm glad those guys really kind of stuck to their guns and, and did that. And um, you see the benefits of it. You see the benefits of it. Yeah, no doubt, too. You got to take this way back to people want to do some history. Go back and look up the name Marlon Briscoe. Mm -hmm. Marlon Briscoe. A like guy who was very talented. They tried to switch him over to another position, but he kind of fought fought the way. But uh, as you mentioned, I think I, Lamar Jackson's issue was whether or not he could throw the ball. And now he's he's actually working on that and got that down to a science, and the rest is history. Yeah. Hey, we're going to go to our overtime and blog talk radio. We had a rough week in the NFL picks, man. I'm, I'm ashamed of – how we I picked, but the play the teams that lost this week should be more ashamed than yes. us because it was yeah. just so it was just so crazy. But uh, we get to strap it uh, strap it up again and uh, make some picks this this week. Pop has his picks in. Black put his picks in. So it's up to you and me to put our picks in, and uh, we'll make our picks and justify them on our uh, Blog Talk Radio Overtime Show on the Goon Squad Sports Radio Show. Somebody call in and, and tell me that my pick, their picks, because I'm not doing any. I'm not doing any. <laughs> I'm taking taking calls right now. Somebody help me. Come on, right, come on. <laughs> you gotta make a comeback, man. You gotta make a comeback. <laughs> Basketball is on its way, bro. <laughs> Catch us on Blog Talk. We'll see you soon.